Welcome to Airgun Action. In this week's episode I'm taking a look at the latest version of the iconic Viroc HW100. But before that, I'm heading out to a farm to target rats that have set up home around a slurry pit. Another one from the same hole there. Now this is some really interesting shooting. I'm on a mixed farm, but I'm actually targeting the slurry pit where there appear to be quite a few rats on the move. It's a, it's a great setup because directly behind the pit is a big cattle shed, so there's loads of feed for them there. And um, around, the, around the pit, there's also plenty of nesting sites for them. It also appears that some of them are actually coming here to drink. Um, so far I've been shooting them from against the back wall mostly, which is giving me a nice, safe backstop. Um, but I will keep an eye on the other areas because no doubt as the night progresses, we'll see rats moving elsewhere. <laughs> One entertaining thing about picking them off from that wall is that they drop down with a heck of a splosh into a watery grave. Um, I'm going to be quiet now and we'll hopefully get a few more.
actually saw that one coming through the spotter. Initially, all I could see over there was the fainter glow of the dead rats that were obviously still giving, uh, giving out a heat signature. And there was a um, moorhen on the pit as well. Surprisingly, it's absolutely filthy, but the moorhens still seem to love living and nesting down there. Anyhow, once that rat was coming out, there was no missing it. It stood out like a sore thumb. And I was there ready to pick it off through the, through the alpex. Brilliant stuff. definitely starting to feel like they're beginning to wise up to the danger now um, also it's a really clear sky tonight we've got a full moon and I gotta admit I do feel a bit like I'm sat out and, and these rats are probably aware of the fact that we're here um, there is another ratty area that we will probably move on to I also feel that we'll be tucked away inside and probably less conspicuous to the rats but I'll give it a little bit longer here first that was another one that really didn't want to uh, venture very far away from cover so I think being that it has got pretty quiet in this spot now we will make that move and like I say tuck ourselves up somewhere where I think we'll be a little bit more stealthy it's gone well here though we've had a few rats um, and also now that I know we're gonna make a move it doesn't matter if we make a bit of noise so I will quickly tell you about the kit before we move on um, so the gun tonight is the Brocock concept XR 177 caliber sub 12 foot pounds which makes it absolutely brilliant for using rain farm yards very accurate gun multi-shot magazine with a really nice large side lever action just makes life so much easier shooting in the dark to be able to fairly intuitively find that side lever backwards and forwards you're reloaded ready for the next shot um, Optics, it's the Hick Micro Alpex from Scott Country. I've spoken about this scope a lot. I absolutely love it. I've used it so much through through last winter um, and it, it just hasn't, hasn't let me down. It's got a brilliant full colour image by day. It's fantastic in twilight and as I hope you'll be seeing from what I'm capturing through it tonight, it's got a really sharp infrared image too. So it's just a brilliant piece of kit. Um, obviously we were out lamping a few weeks ago. This is infrared, so it's just giving me that extra degree of stealth. I'm not waving the lamp around. Um, and as ever, the scope is held on with sports match uh, scope mounts, which I've got absolute faith in. I've used them for decades, and I just know they give me that rock solid contact between the optic and the gun. So that's a quick run through the kit. We'll get ourselves over to that other spot, and all being well, we'll shoot a few more rats.
two in fairly quick succession there. It's funny, you get little flurries in certain spots, then it'll go quiet and you might get a couple somewhere else, but I'd actually spotted a couple muddling about just before the first one of those, in and amongst that bit of heap of rubbish there. And uh, suffice to say, that was probably the ones I'd seen through the spotter. Another pretty close one there. That one was just under 10 meters, so it needed a bit of holdover. And I've got to say, I'm glad we've moved to this spot because it has got things going again. It's slowing down a little bit now, but we're getting through them, so that is inevitable. And I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but obviously we've moved away from the slurry pit. We're not that far from it. And the moorhens over there have been making a hell of a lot of noise. I'm not sure what it is that's agitating them, but I think it's just as well that we're not trying to shoot there now because with all that racket, I don't think there'd be a lot of rats on the move. Oh, I'm going to make that the last one. It's getting late and uh, I don't want to leave it outrageously late because the farmer here likes to lock up after we leave. But uh, it's been a decent night on the rats. It's never really been frantic, but it's been steady and I must have accounted for the best part of 20 odd rats. So it's certainly been worth our while. And also I will be trying to get back pretty quickly because I'm just trying to cram in as many sessions as I can before the days start getting longer and obviously when the clocks change and it just gets tougher to put in decent lengthy sessions after dark without staying up right into the small hours. And when I do get back, I'm certainly gonna have another look at that slurry pit because I reckon that could be a bit of a stronghold. Another great night's ratting with the Hick Micro Alpex there. Next up, I'm taking a look at the latest version of the Virac HW100. It's hard to believe that the Virac HW100 has now been around for 20 years. Now, 
This air gun has always been at the front of the PCP pack and a rolling program of development tweaks has kept it there. Now what I've got here is the latest KT version from official UK distributors Hull Cartridge and it retails for £1,075. So let's take a closer look at this iconic air gun. This is the carbine version which measures up at a pretty compact 95 centimetres with the supplied silencer fitted. Now it tips the scales at just a shade under 3.3 kilos before you fit a scope and it is very solidly constructed. Now Virac has a reputation for excellent build quality and engineering and that is certainly apparent in this air gun which is flawlessly finished. The stock has been tweaked on this latest model and the laminate version now has a push button adjustable cheek piece. Now I really like the forward sweep of the front of the forend and the grooves that run back from it on either side of the stock make for a really good hold with your leading hand. The stock is ambidextrous and on this model has a large thumb hole cutaway. Now you can't really shoot thumb up with it but it's still very comfortable and it looks great. Now the actual pistol grip is brilliantly contoured to set you up for the trigger and the stippling that wraps around it is very neat and really grippy. The latest version of the HW100 has more definition in the styling of its cheek piece. Now obviously this is a scope only air gun and that cheek piece is nice and high to ensure good alignment between your eye and your chosen optic. Now the butt section of the stock is finished with a rubber pad and I have always really liked the black and white spacers. You can see that there is a Picatinny rail for scope attachment but it can be removed to expose the usual Virac dovetail rail. Now the KT model has a 31 centimeter barrel and it's available in 177 and 22 calibers as well as 0.20 to special order. Now it has a half inch UNF thread and the silencer seen here is supplied as standard. Now Virac silencers are known to be pretty effective and this one makes the HW100 remarkably quiet. This air gun runs a 14 shot magazine and it comes supplied with two. Now the magazine does look very basic in design but it's pellet friendly and is actually recognized as one of the best air gun magazines out there. Partly because there's virtually nothing that can go wrong with it. Now if you pull the side lever all the way back and then also pull back the magazine retainer, the mag then pulls out from the right hand side. Now loading it is simply a matter of pushing pellets nose first from what I describe as the notched side. When the mag's full you simply pop it back in, return the retainer and the side lever and you're ready to go. The magazine is driven by a slick side lever action that's adorned with a neat drop down biathlon type handle which can be removed. Now Virac were using side lever actions when most air gun manufacturers were still on rear bolt actions and their mechanism really does work like clockwork. It is ultra reliable. Cocking the action, indexing the magazine and probing pellets into the breech to deliver fast dependable follow-up shots and quick fire plinking. Virox engineering always hits the mark and that's certainly apparent in the HW100's excellent match grade trigger. Now the blade looks fairly simple in design but its gentle sweep and subtly curved face delivers plenty of feel. Now the two stage unit is adjustable but these triggers usually leave the factory absolutely spot on. This one has a fairly deep first stage and it comes to a really distinct stop before a crisp and absolutely predictable second stage break. There's a manual safety catch positioned at the rear of the right hand side of the action and it's easy to reach with your thumb unless you happen to be left handed. Now it can't be applied unless the gun is cocked and then you draw it backwards to make the gun safe and then thumb it forwards when you're ready to take the shot. 
The HW100 produces muzzle energy close to the UK legal limit. This one is doing 11.5 foot-pounds and it's doing it pretty consistently with a variation of 9 feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Now its air cylinder is removable and remaining air pressure is displayed on the gauge at its front. Maximum fill pressure is 200 bar and from that the 2.2 caliber review gun returned about 70 consistent shots. Now that's not bad for a short barreled air gun with such a compact cylinder. Now that cylinder can also be refilled in situ and that is simply a matter of pulling the plug out from the inlet at its front and then plugging in with the supplied filling probe. The HW100 has no shortfalls in the accuracy department and is the sort of air gun that's capable of landing one pellet on top of another at 25 metres. Now thanks to its great barrel, excellent trigger and very consistent output, it's also capable of ragged single hole groups at 40 metres and 50 metre spinners of really straightforward targets off of a bench in steel conditions. Now, the HW100 is also the kind of air gun that most people find pretty comfortable to shoot from a variety of stances. So, provided you put in the practice, it will also deliver the goods out in the field when you're away from the comfort of the bench. There is no denying that the HW100 has stood the test of time. Now, I've actually got a sporter carbine model of my own, and that's given the best part of 10 years good service with no more maintenance than the occasional wipe down with an oily cloth. Now, it's also a gun that's kind on the eye, and I really like the way that its styling has remained fairly traditional over the years. So, that's the Virac HW100 KT Walnut in its newest guise. It is a brilliant air gun which combines competition winning accuracy potential with rugged build quality and precision German engineering. Now I can certainly vouch for its suitability for live quarry shooting and I know loads of club shooters who make it their first choice on the range. Now this air gun may have been around for 20 years but it's certainly still going strong. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but we'll be back again in two weeks with much, much more. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe and it means you won't miss a single episode. Also, do have a look at those subscription offers for Airgunner and Airgun World magazines. You should be able to find details in the show description. I'll be back again in two weeks and in the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe.